welcome to the next lecture in this lecture we will study another amplitude modulation basic technique called single sideband modulation to get motivation about single sideband mod modulation we will first go back to double sideband suppressed carrier case and look carefully into it so suppose we have a message signal in time domain m of t is a message signal and m of t has a Fourier transform <coughs> m of omega and it is bandwidth is b okay suppose m of t looks like any of such signal And let its Fourier transform look like this. Since it is bandwidth is b, so this point will be 2 pi of b, this point will be minus 2 pi of b, and we are x axis is the angular frequency. Okay. <coughs> now, what is the DSBSC signal? We modulate this m of t using a carrier wave and m of t cos omega c t this is the dsbs signal <coughs> what is Fourier transform you know from modulation theorem that its Fourier transform is one half of m of omega plus omega c plus m of omega minus omega c <coughs> and if we plot it so this is omega c this is minus omega c and this is omega c plus 2 pi b omega c minus 2 pi b this is minus omega c plus 2 pi b and minus omega c minus 2 pi b okay and we know that it is band with this 2b now if you look at this from this side and this side it is symmetric around omega c okay the frequency uh, the variation of amplitude of the spectrum versus the frequency uh, is symmetric uh, on both the sides so this side and this side <coughs> similarly this part of spectrum also it is symmetric here and here if you go into the message signal also which is also symmetric see a common question which most of the students ask in the beginning of studying for a transform that what does negative frequency mean right this might be question in your mind also see this is the positive frequency frequency can be positive only negative frequency is not having any physical interpretation it is because of mathematical convenience it has actually a mathematical reason and that reason is if you have any signal g of t any time signal or function whose Fourier transform is g of omega just remember this fact that if g of t is a real valued signal okay for example e to the power minus t or cos omega t whatever then g of omega will be symmetric always it has to be symmetric and if and the reverse if g of omega if Fourier transform is not symmetric 
then g of t is complex complex period it is a universal fact okay so since our message signals are real signals so their Fourier transform has to be symmetric for Fourier transform to be symmetric it means that around x axis y axis we have to define if there is a positive half of this on if the if the positive frequencies have some values uh, of the spectrum it should have equivalent values for negative frequencies all the negative frequencies do not exist physically they are incorporated for a mathematical convenience so that the signals are real just remember this fact okay <laughs> otherwise if you see message signals so around this y axis the information that is contained into in this band right side band is same as information contained in this left hand side so we call this upper side band and we call this lower side band here we will call this lower side band and this upper side band okay now you see these in dsbsc you are the bandwidth is 2b hertz okay if b if as an example suppose your message signal m of t has a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz then dsbsc signal corresponding to this message signal will have a bandwidth of 8 kilohertz okay now bandwidth is frequency or uh, spectrum it is costly okay we want to save bandwidth in various cases so what we argue here is what if we do not transmit both upper side upper side band and lower side band we because they contain the same information so now let me plot it here so this is omega c I will just transmit suppose this upper side band okay so this is omega c plus 2 pi b now uh, if I will transmit on the upper side band but my signal should be real for my signal to be real I should have equivalent mirror image of this side band on the left hand side of y axis so minus omega c and like this okay if i will not uh, you know if i will not keep this one then the signal will be complex that is why i have introduced it. if i have introduced here some part of positive frequencies i have introduced equivalently here negative frequencies okay now what i have done is i have just eliminated lower side band and I have only allowed upper side band frequencies. <coughs> I can equivalently do another thing. <coughs> Since lower side band, upper side band contain same information, so I can just in include lower side band and parallelly on this side, lower side. Band. okay now how can i attain that one of the ways is I, I can put a filter here okay i can put a filter here high high pass filter which will eliminate all the frequencies below lower side band below the below omega c whatever way i can attain i can obtain these signals they are called single side band modulation both of them are called single side band modulation so this is dsbsc okay and this is usb based single side band this is lsb based single side band okay 
Now the question is how can we obtain it and what is the mathematical representation for that? For this you have to look into carefully. See m of omega is the Fourier transform of message signal. Okay. Now I will call the right side band this one. I, let me call it m plus of omega. Okay. And the lower side band part I will call as m minus of omega. Right. Now, how can I obtain upper side band and lower side band from uh, double side band? For this, I will need a function, unit step function. So, if I do it without modulation, for so for modulated uh, unmodulated signal let's say message signal uh, here is the, now i this is the m of omega and this is its m plus of omega this is m minus of omega if i want only positive part what i can do is i can multiply this u of t unit step function all of you know what unit step function is so if I multiply m of omega with unit step function, I will get USB upper side band and that will be m plus of omega. Similarly, if I will multiply u of sorry, it is not u of t uh, rather omega. Okay, because we are working in frequency domain. Sorry omega okay if i multiply u of minus omega so u of minus omega is this thing okay then i will get lower side band okay so this is without uh, modulation okay i am just from this part i am getting it now with modulation we can uh, represent it like this suppose if I take this USB I can call it M plus now it is shifted to Omega C so it will be called M plus Omega plus Omega C okay and this will be called M minus of Omega minus Omega C oh sorry omega plus omega c yeah because it is minus omega c oh 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 i have tried it properly it is m when you shift by omega c it will be omega minus omega c when you shift by minus omega c it will be omega plus omega c okay similarly if it is a lower side band then i will call this m minus of omega minus omega c and this part as m plus of omega plus omega c so this is how we uh, represent uh, this Fourier transform of single sideband okay so this is the single so m plus you can say m plus of omega m minus of omega and then correspondingly m plus of omega plus omega c m minus of omega minus omega c these are the Fourier transforms these are the spectral densities corresponding to single sideband modulation okay now remains uh, how to represent it in time domain for that we will need a notion of something called Hilbert transform okay which i will introduce in next video and then we will use that concept of hilbert transform uh, to basically define the time domain representation but 
you know in order to uh, prepare for that we need some tools we need first of all to know the Fourier transform of unit step function which most of you may make a mistake suppose you say that unit step function is simply 1 t greater than equal to 0 0 t less than 0 so you can write it like this e to the power minus j omega t d omega right and you may write it as 1 over j omega but this is wrong okay so in next part of the lecture i will uh, point out what what is the mistake here then we will find the Fourier transform of unistor function using that we will uh, find we will try to find the time domain representation of single sideband modulation okay because see this is all in frequency domain m plus of omega m minus omega and then we will correspondingly also study how to generate ssp and also how to demodulate the ssp and with ssb we will wind up the amplitude modulation okay this much we will do there are some more topics you can study them of your own and then after amplitude modulation after ssb i will be teaching you frequency modulation two or three lectures there then we will move to that directly to digital communication uh, in subsequent lectures